Today we're going to be talking about Korea's latest female psychopath that has been sweeping the media. People are shocked of how chilling and mysterious this case still is because technically of what she looks like and how young she is. I mean, she is the least expected suspect when it comes to a killer, a murderer. And we're going to be diving deep into what psychologists say that she might be dealing with and who she might really be. Some people are comparing her to the cool Yoo Jung case, which was a whole nother case that has sweeped the Korean media a couple years back because they do technically have the same name. Her name is Ko Yoo Jung and today's suspect name is Chung Yoo Jung and they're both females and are named as psychopaths. Because these cases are not available in English, I do take a lot of time to translate them and present to you guys because it is so important to talk about global cases. So if you want to support this true crime and mystery channel, remember to hit the like button and subscribing really helps. Just hit the algorithm and just leaving a comment down below what you guys have thought about today's case. It really helps me to continue going. So let's talk about the base details of today's case first. So this is Chung Yoo Jung. She is 23 years old. To me, this girl looks very quiet and not threatening at all. I mean, maybe it's the glasses, maybe it's the hairstyle. Even when it comes to female psychopath or killer, there's certain type of people that you would imagine in your head what they would look like. So Chung Yoo Jung would be on a tutoring app. Now these tutoring apps are very popular for parents. It's kind of like a dating app for tutors. You know, you're able to get a tutor, a babysitter, whatever you need easily using these apps. And these teachers that are on these apps are certified. You know, they have the resume on there. It's a very professional application, obviously, that a lot of people use in Korea. Now, Chung Yoo Jung would make a profile and would pretend and say that she was a mother of a teenage daughter that was in middle school and was in need of a tutor so that she could prepare for high school. Now, she claimed that her daughter was 14 years old and was looking for an English teacher specifically. From what it was reported, I guess the way these tutoring apps work, teachers can DM you or you can DM teachers by looking at to profiles depending on what you want to look for. From what we know on the app, Yoo Jung was the one to DM this tutor named Kim. She was 26 years old and she claimed that she also could teach English and taught college level curriculums. Now here are some of the conversation that has been released and it's talking back and forth about what to teach the child, you know, what days that the tutor was available. And in one of the conversation, Yoo Jung would ask the tutor, do you live alone? Now eventually the tutor and Yoo Jung would make an arrangement that they would meet at a certain day and that she would send her teenage daughter to the tutor's house and they can have a session there. So number one, Yoo Jung was the one who even went through the profiles of what tutors and what victims she wanted to prey on. Now victim Kim, she was described by her friends as someone bright, someone that listened to your problems and concerned. She was a great listener. And one friend even said she was someone that you can learn a lot from. So you could see the type of energy this tutor had. She also did tutoring because she wanted to earn money for herself and she wanted to cut any allowances from her parents. Now in Korea still, you know, especially as a female, you do live with your parents, you receive still allowance in your 20s. So it is a pretty normal thing. And she was just such a hardworking, innocent victim. Now here is a CCTV on May 26th around 4 p.m. Yoo Jung would be wearing a middle school uniform Form and headed off to her tutor pretending to be her daughter. Which is sickening, but can you imagine this woman? Again, she doesn't look threatening at all, but she literally pretended to be her daughter, got uniform somewhere, like middle school uniform that she maybe borrowed from somewhere. Like she didn't even wear her normal clothing. She literally wore a middle school outfit to do this. She would enter the apartment of the tutor at around 5.34 p.m. and left there after 6 p.m., around one hour later. Though we don't know the details of how it exactly went down yet, she would kill the victim. And we'll get to in a second of what the autopsy showed, but this girl is definitely not who you think she is. The crazy thing about Yoo Jung was that she left the apartment and she went to like two different supermarkets near her house. So from the tutor's house and Yoo Jung's actual house that she lived with her grandfather was about 20 minutes away by car, which is not that close, right? So she went to the supermarket and purchased bags, knife, and cleaning supplies in order to to get rid of the body, which is interesting because she did not prepare this pre doing the deeds. It was like after she has done this, which is interesting. And then she went to the second supermarket to buy garbage bags. She would then go back to the apartments 
And then she would go back to her house, I guess, to get a suitcase and then would go back to the tutor's apartment again. And she went back and forth to the victim's house total of three times. Yu Jung would then put some of the body parts inside of the garbage bag and would dispose it in a dumpster. And rest of the parts would be stuffed inside the suitcase that she prepared. And this happened around May 27th, 12 a.m., which was on my birthday, which I can't even imagine that happened. Then finally, with her suitcase stuffed, she would wear the victim's clothing and would get a taxi to go to a river that was near her house. She would wear the victim's clothing, you guys. It was as if she was embodying the victim's identity. A little note, uh, professionals who had evaluated her behaviors seemed that she had zero remorse, she had zero panic, like she was literally going back and forth from her house like it was hers. She was walking around so normal, again, no panicking, like there's a certain way about her walk as well as if she's like walking around like she's going to the playground or something. And according to professionals, this is very unusual because usually even psychopaths, like they usually panic, they usually like do not go back and forth to be caught on CCTVs because they understand what they just have done. But Yu Jung is different. There's nothing about her that shows that she was in hurry in any way either. Now, when she got the taxi, and this is one of the misinformation that was out in the media, there was some information that the taxi driver got blood in his hands, that he was helping out with a suitcase, which turned out to be false. Yu Jung put the suitcase into the trunk and out herself. The taxi driver did not help at all. Once they got to the river, she took the luggage out herself from the trunk. She left somewhere into the deep river she got rid of the body parts and brought back the suitcase now the taxi driver says that once he dropped her off like he took a smoke break and for some reason he knew something was off because this was very late at night by the way this is not like take a picnic take a bicycle ride kind of river area if you see the pictures like this is not a place that you go to do anything at around like 1 a.m the taxi driver felt something odd and knew that she was gonna come back so he waited about 15 to 20 minutes and did notice that Yu Jung did come back. Police believe that Yu Jung did not think that the taxi was the same taxi and she asked, hey, can you offer me a ride? That is when the taxi driver said that he called the police because he knew in his guts that something was wrong, although he didn't really see any body parts or see any blood. He did confess and say that the suitcase seemed a lot lighter by the way she was dragging it compared to when she got off. Now the police did come. I don't know how the taxi driver was able to convince her to stay there until the police came. But once the police came, they did ask to check the luggage. They opened it and nothing was in there, but they did know Notice some blood spots inside of the luggage. When they asked her, like, what is this? Yu Jung said that, oh, I'm menstruating and I got menstruation blood on it. And the police knew something was odd, so they did call the ambulance and they did take her to the hospital. Now, this is where we get to the creepy, weird world that Yu Jung lives in. At the hospital, um, they showed that there was no signs that she had menstruation or that she was spotting. And then all of a sudden, she said she actually got rid of a baby. She just had a baby on her own and she decided to get rid of it that's why she got blood on it so they did an ultrasound on her uterus and they saw that there was no evidence that she gave birth anytime at all within recent days or hours so that was also another crazy lie that she told and this is when she was taken to the police interrogation where she gave her first testimony now at first she told a crazy story claiming that when she went to the tutor's house there was a suspect already who has unalived her and then the suspect told Yu Jung, hey if you keep it a secret and if you dispose of body for me i will let you live in the victim's identity then when police knew that that was a crazy bizarre story she changed it to that you know she was afraid that she was an adult and an adult seeking like an english teacher was embarrassing so she had to pretend to be a middle school student and she went to the tutor's house and they had an argument about the curriculum so she got angry and decided to just murder her right then and there. Yu Jung finally confessed and said what might be actually the most closest to the truth was that she just wanted to know what it felt like to unalive someone. The autopsy and the victim showed that Yu Jung has actually stabbed this woman over 20 times, specifically mostly on her neck and her chest, which professionals see this as her only goal was to go there and kill someone. And it was to make it 
quick rather than her wanting to see someone's reaction or getting like her anger out on someone. Her motive going there was 100% in order to kill someone. And as you guys know, pre-planning and doing something out of anger at the moment is like a different charge. So you do have to really analyze like exactly if this was pre-planned or not. Not to mention that she did not run away from the scene. She literally came back three times cleaning up and getting rid of the body. And also if you analyze these CCTV footages, she actually cut her hair specifically to do this and make herself look like a middle school student. So not only her wearing middle school outfits, but she cut her hair to do all of this like this was completely 100 percent pre-planned in her head now because police believe that this was definitely someone dangerous they did decide to release her identity again legally by the police people were shocked of what she looked like and how young she was and what was inside her mind once she was arrested during the media time she said quote i'm sorry to the victim's family i'll be diligent during interrogation thank you <laughs> 제 정신이 아니었던 것 같습니다. 죄송합니다. 할 말이 없습니다. 죄송합니다. 검찰 조사에서 성실히 조사에 임하겠습니다. And you get to hear her voice firsthand and she just sounds so normal. Like it doesn't sound like she's stuttering or she has some kind of a, you know, problem. Like, like no voice cracks, no panicking, nothing. She sounds so normal. It almost seemed as if it was not natural for her to say it, but it was something that she rehearsed and we will get into more of this. So let's get to why this case is so baffling and what could be inside of this woman's head. So Yoo Jung never had any past criminal histories or behaviors or anything that anybody reported that was odd. Then not to imagine Yoo Jung would attack someone similar to her age, a 26 year old woman. Now this was interesting because usually suspects would pick someone that is weaker than them. For example, that's why a lot of men would overpower females, hurting an elderly or a child, you know, someone weaker than you. But Yoo Jung decided to pick someone that was similar around her age. Yoo Jung doesn't seem very tall and like kind of physically fit herself. So to pick someone that could have have overpowered her that could have like had the same power struggle as her was also interesting and again the second thing was her looks i mean let's face it she looks like a fine not threatening maybe a girl that you would find at the library or at the cafe just studying but you would never imagine someone like her having these dark thoughts and planning something like this it was also later revealed that yu jong did not contact just this woman kim she contacted multiple people and it just happened that kim was the one that they got this arrangement that quickly so other tutors came forward saying that they have been contacted by her and hear some of the conversation of how it went. Do you live alone? I'm looking for a tutor for my daughter for about two weeks. Can we do the tutoring at your house? Now, one of the tutors said she almost said yes, but she said no to the part that they were doing the tutor at her apartment because she lived in a one room, which was very small. There was no desk. So if she had a bigger house to invite people into, she said that she could. She probably would have said yes to tutoring because obviously she needs the job and the money. Another woman who said the same thing, that she was approached by Yu Jung, and one of the questions was, do you live alone? And at the moment, people think that she also preyed upon people that was around her age. So tutors that was in her 20s, tutors that kind of seemed like they needed money, that wasn't married, you know, they lived alone. Like there was specific type of victim that Yu Jung wanted to go for. So with no clear motive and to prevent this hopefully from happening in the future, we have to deep dive into who Yu Jung is and what she might be dealing with inside of her head. Remember, she confessed to the police saying that she wanted to know what it felt like to murder. And she told the police that she actually enjoyed every day watching true crime documentaries, crime videos, and books. And she even searched on her phone things related to murder. And one of the movies that she says that she watched multiple times and that she really liked was a movie called Hwacha. Hwacha is a Korean movie, a psychological thriller, where a woman kills another woman and takes her identity and lives this whole entire fake life 
living as this woman that she literally killed, which is starting to sound very similar to what Yu Jung tried to do. Now, going back to what she told the police during the first interrogation, where she said a random suspect was already killing the victim, and the suspect told her, if you get rid of the body, you know, I'll allow you to live in the victim's identity. Her wearing the victim's clothing while she was disposing the victim's body. Her going on tutoring app and seeing the profile of each person that she wanted to prey upon. It's almost as if she wanted to steal and live as the identity of her victim. Could it be that she hated her life so much that the only way to get out of this was to live as another person? Like literally. So forensic testing was done on her phone and police found that since she graduated till today, which has been five years, she had zero friends and almost zero acquaintances or anyone that she kept in contact with. So she was totally on her own. People also found out that she was living with her grandfather and her grandfather did not have a wife. So she didn't even have a grandmother and no one knows where her parents are. And it seemed like it was just her and her grandfather since she was very young. Now, according to her middle school friends, they remember her in middle school as, you know, just a normal kind, quiet girl, but she did have friends. They showed her being a bit active with her friends, nothing crazy, nothing odd. She participated in like clubs and school activities. So in middle school, it seemed like everything was fine until she got to high school. This is when her behavior started to change a little. People noticed that she started to purposely isolate herself. They remember that she had a seat next to the window and she would literally pull the curtain windows. She would make a little barricade or barrier so that she didn't have to see or talk to anybody. Friends would try to make a conversation with her and she would not respond or only respond with yes and no. And they noticed that she would be eating like food inside of her little barricade curtain. But interesting, she never missed school. Her friends also do not remember anybody teasing her as well. This was just her in her own little world that nobody could really understand. I was a very, very quiet student as well in elementary throughout high school. Like I didn't say much and I didn't have a lot of friends at all. I'm sure people thought that I couldn't speak at all because I really didn't speak. I never raised my hand. So I'm sure you guys could relate. There are a lot of people who are just quiet or who are in their own world, but it seemed like Yu Jung was kind of different than just a normal quiet student. Since graduating high school till today as an adult 23 years old, Police found that she never got a job either. But there are evidence of her trying to apply to companies. So when she was 18, a golf company that was looking for people to be a golf caddy person. And in this resume that Yu Jung actually applied, she wrote, I love working in a social environment. I really would love this job. And when called to do an interview, the interviewee specifically remembers Yu Jung because she was not talking at all at the interview. The interviewee would ask, you know, why do you want this job? You know, what are you like? Whatever. And Yu Jung would not respond minus yes or no. So there was no conversation that was going back and forth. But even after this kind of awkward interview, Yu Jung would reapply two, three times. And when finally she didn't get a call, apparently she called the golf company. She got frustrated and started to curse at them that why they weren't hiring her. Now, if you take a closer look at the resume, it says that she wanted another place to live like a dorm while working at this place. So gathering all this information, what professionals believe happened was that she really wanted to get out of her house. She really wanted to get out of this life and situation she was in. Now, whatever problems or issues that she might had in her head, she just could not express herself, yet she wanted to get out. She wanted to be someone else. She just couldn't understand who she was. And almost as if instead of like a normal person getting a job, you know, earning a little money, getting out of the house, being a little more social and networking, like to her, that didn't make sense. And it seems like the only way that that she was able to get out of this little like world and frustration she was in was to embody herself as someone else. I guess she felt the perfect victim was this 26 year old tutor who spoke English. She was vibrant. You know, she lived on her own. Maybe there was a specific look that she liked about this tutor and she envied someone else's life and wanted to just embody herself in someone else. Watching that movie, which was almost identical to what she wanted to do. And I think living in this fantasy for so long, she convinced herself that yes, I can do this. Like she really acted upon this in real life. 
movie. So in a way, it's as if she didn't know the difference between a movie and real life or have empathy or have that kind of a deep conversation or an understanding of another person. There was also a lot in the media saying that Yu Jung by the police or whoever scored her a 28 in the psychopath test. And in South Korea, if you score above a 25, it means that you're considered a psychopath. But professionals are now saying they don't know who did this test and this is not 100% reliable yet because you have to do a deep dive into their childhood and see the real story and motive of why she did the things she did in order to really score this test. So, so they're saying that to not rely on the psychopath test yet about Yu Jung. Now people wondered, well, is Yu Jung an extreme loner or like in Japanese, you call it a hitori? It's someone that who does not step a foot outside of their house. So they eat, sleep, do everything inside. They also don't have any friends or have any relation with anybody outside of their own and maybe their family. A lot of them say that there's also a lot of social anxiety as a factor and their inside mind world also reflects their outside world of not being able to take care of themselves and to clean up and organize things in their life. But according to these loners that were interviewed, you know, they say that usually they blame 100% of their failures on themselves. So by going outside and interacting with people, it's as if they're like leaving their burden at someone else and that gives them like anxiety. So they would rather keep everything to themselves, never seek for help. But when it comes to Yu Jung, it seems like she's technically not a loner as well because she showed behaviors of leaving her house with a backpack she would come back home late at night nobody knows what she did but you know she was constantly active somehow and to look for other victims to prey upon it seems like she wanted to get her frustration out on other people so professionals say that they don't believe she was a hitori or a loner as of right now professionals believe that what they see in Yu Jung is having Asperger's syndrome now having the syndrome has no relations to her acting out in a certain way murdering people FYI this is just what professionals see in Yu Jung personally and the base of what they can start with to try and understand her. People with Asperger's syndrome might have difficulty relating to others socially and their behavior and thinking patterns can be rigid and repetitive. They also see like certain patterns and behaviors and the way she walks and the way she was repeatedly watching one type of movie. So this is all we have for now that we can analyze about her. Hopefully we can figure more things about her so so that we can understand, take a deep dive, so that possibly we can prevent this from happening in the future, to give help to those who may show early signs like Yu Jung did. One thing is for sure, professionals also say that she's not stupid. I mean, she was able to make up all these crazy lies. At first, when the police came in, she said that she wanted a lawyer and did not talk without a lawyer. So it seems like she knows what she's talking about. It seems like the way she was doing that interview in the media very shortly. Again, it sounded like she practiced what she wanted to say to the media. And as of right now, apparently she's trying to use Shim Shim Biak, which is like the unconscious acting out of control excuse especially psychopaths or people with mental illness or people who are very drunk when acting out a certain criminal behavior can use this to lessen their sentence at the end of the day this is still a very complicated case to try and figure out who this woman is it is so crazy how you know these apps that we have you know so easy to meet people kind of like dating apps tutoring apps where we you know one-on-one -on -one, a teacher and a student or a parent can meet in the whoever's house and you just never know like who you're meeting this tutor met up with Yu Jung thinking that she was a teenager with good heart that she just wanted to teach someone. She had no relationship to the suspect. That's the craziest part and that you can meet anybody these days so easily. It's like I am looking at those videos of her CCTV footages and I'm like, she just did the most evil, cruel thing to somebody else and she's walking like a normal person. Literally walking into supermarkets after unaliving someone. Like, can you imagine running into her? not knowing what she has just done an hour ago. Remember to leave your comments. If there's any developing updates, I will update you guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.